Hi, I'm Bill Burnett with AC Controls Company. We're here today to talk about the Honeywell VersaFlow Smart Coriolis Meter and discuss uh, how to install it, how to start it up using the quick setup guide uh, that's in the manual. The Honeywell Smart Coriolis Meter comes in a variety of sizes from a quarter inch to 10 inch, comes in a dual tube and a, a single tube straight through design can be bought as a custody transfer meter if it needs to be. Can also be purchased with the meter and the electronics separate from one another so that you can mount the electronics hundreds of feet away if you need to. Or the tube can be purchased with a Modbus interface so that you don't need any transmitter, saving space and allowing you to communicate with your control system using Modbus. Buying a Coriolis meter is an important decision and one that you need to do properly. Before you even purchase the meter, it's very important that you understand your flow, your pressure, your temperature, and all the conditions associated with the measurement, viscosities of the fluid, types of fluid, uh, all of the parameters that you can obtain, and we put those in an application data sheet that we use to make sure that the meter we provide you is going to work. It's important to know that because you have a three inch line doesn't mean you might have a three inch meter. We size these meters for the flow, not the line size. It's also important to consider where you're going to install it. Uh, Coriolis meter is very forgiving in the fact that it does not require straight run uh, like other types of meters do, but it does require that the tube be full at all times, that there be a minimum of solids, no bubbles or air trapped in the meter, things that can cause an error in measurement. The ideal situation is to install this meter in a vertical run with the flow going up so that if you have any solids they will fall down through the meter and end up in the piping below it. If you have any air bubbles or entrained gas it will rise through the meter and go into the piping above the meter. In either case we're keeping it uh, full of fluid and the type of fluid we're trying to measure. The other thing to remember when you install one of these and design your piping is it's very important that you be able to shut the flow off to the meter while it has the fluid in the pipe that you want to measure. A zero has to be performed for the meter to function properly. So valving upstream and downstream, a bypass system so that you can continue to run while you're zeroing it, a way to drain the meter if you need to is very important. Another consideration is a way to calibrate the meter after it's installed as far as the amount of flow that goes through the tube. That can be accomplished with a uh, connection downstream so that you can flow product into a uh, cylinder that you can measure the actual flow, weigh it, compare it to the output of the meter, or uh, there are inline systems that can do that kind of thing. Coriolis meters measure flow in a mass flow condition. The tubes are oscillated at a known frequency and with no flow they will be in sequence with one another from front to back side of the meter. As the fluid starts to flow through the tube the mass of the fluid will cause a, phase, a frequency shift between front and back that can be interpolated into mass flow. Therefore, the basic flow measurement we get from the meter is a mass flow meter, uh, measurement. We can also use that uh, value to determine volumetric flow. We're measuring temperature in the meter. We can display or transmit that if we need to. And we can also uh, measure density because obviously the mass of a fluid that is a known viscosity can cause a change in this meter that can be interpolated into density. These values can be outputted using 4 to 20, foundation field bus, heart, uh, several ways that you can transmit that data back to your control system. The, the flow meter has a variety of outputs and inputs that you can use. We have status outputs so that you can get alarms at the control system in case you have an error or problem in the meter. We can have alarms as an output that are based on the flow, the density, the temperature, or the volumetric flow, and you can use those in the control system. Uh, we also have input uh, 
contacts that allow you to automatically zero the meter, change uh, flow ranges, and do things like that. The meter will measure flow in either direction, positive or negative, and that's indicated on the front of the meter. We have a positive sign that would mean the flow is going in that direction, a negative sign the flow is coming from that direction. So you can put the piping in, you can put the meter in, and you can uh, access a lot of things that you can, you can use to uh, make your measurement and make your process run better. The meter can be programmed a number of ways, and what we're going to do today is talk about the quick setup, which is 99% of the applications. I should also mention you can order this meter pre-configured. For a minimal charge, we will supply the meter to you and you just install it and start it up. The quick startup can be done three ways. You can do it through your network if you're using Hart, uh, Foundation Field Bus, Mod Bus. You can use the keypads on the front to do the uh, setup, troubleshooting or diagnosis or there's an infrared module that you can install in the meter and use it to communicate through an infrared port on a laptop computer. Right now what we're going to do is sort of go through the display and show you how that works and how you would go about setting this meter up if you were taking it out of the box and wanted to install it in your process. The SCM family of Coriolis meters, as I said, can be calibrated, set up, diagnosed, and operated using handheld configurators, networks, or the local keypad. The local keypad is used quite frequently because it's very easy, convenient, and it's there on the meter for you to, uh, to utilize. The display is set up to be pretty versatile, but a couple of things that will come in handy. In the top left-hand corner, if there's an icon there with an exclamation mark, that means you have a status change that, that you can go into the meter, interrogate, and find out what that was. It could be as simple as the power was turned off and turned back on, or it could be a problem with a diagnostic in the meter in terms of over range, over, over uh, density conditions, or problems with the transducers. Across the top is an area reserved for the tag name or number for the meter, and you, in, you can uh, insert those numbers and values from the keypad. The primary proce process variable is typically shown with the large digits in the middle and the units of measure off to the right hand side and that is programmable as well. At the bottom you can have another display showing things like totalizer values, uh, temperatures, uh, anything that might make uh, sense to you or can be used in your process. To access the programming of the meter, as I said earlier, most people use the quick setup. The left button, if you hold that, hold that down, it says to keep the key pressed, and when it times out it says release it. It now says quick setup. It's that simple to get into the setup menu. If I want to do that, I hit the arrow button again, and I have a selection, language, tag number. If I decided to change the tag number, I would scroll over and I would change it with the up and down arrow keys. I can reset values. I can go into service conditions where I can uh, see what the values are for all sorts of things in the meter the frequency the tubes are oscillating, the condition of the tubes, the wear rate of the tubes. There's all sorts of data that's available. It's all outlined in uh, detail in the manual. And I can go into setup. I can set my process input up. Zero and offsets. And zero calibration. Once the meter is installed, it's very important that you have the meter in a no-flow condition with the fluid that is going to be going through the meter and you calibrate that zero simply by 
going into the calibrate zero area and telling it that it's I want to do it automatically or use a default method or a manual method to do my zero calibration. So with no flow in the meter, the fluid that I'm trying to measure in the tube and it full with no solids or air or gas in train, I would simply enter that value and it would zero. To escape an area, you hit the two buttons simultaneously on the outside and you can go back to the menu. I can also add an additional offset manually if I happen to know the meter's off by a quarter of a pound, uh, I can insert that plus or minus value in the meter. I can insert a pipe diameter for my flow corrections and again insert a value that will correct the flow across the dynamic range of the flow by a percentage that I would, I would put in there. And that is a simple way that you can set the meter up. Now if you go to the manual there are literally hundreds of items that can be addressed, accessed, and used to uh, troubleshoot the meter or dial in your flow to its most accurate uh, measurement. Thank you for the time you spent with us today looking at this Coriolis meter. Please keep us in mind for all of your flow measurement needs, process control needs, and valve needs. You can contact us at 704-545-4500 or find us on the web at accontrols.com.